Hello! In this video I will be showcasing the multi-sign functionality of the XRP Ledger. So the first thing we're going to look up is the XRPL uh, multi-sign amendment. So that's the first part we're going to start with. So it was introduced I think in version 0.3.1 Pro, something like that. So there was an amendment for that. I would just have to look it up again because I already forgot that. Um, but multi signing functionality was added, so the basic idea or the basic gist is rather simple. You've got multiple accounts and you will de define what criteria must be met so the transaction goes through. So you've got, for example, one master account. So in my case, it's going to be the r.dev account I've got here. And this account is about whatever, 50 XOP. I'm going to be showcasing it on the live net. And now we're going to also create, so what we're going to do is we, we're going to now create two accounts here. So we're going to create two new accounts. For that I'm going to use also a tool again. So the paper wall generator. So I'm going to use that one here. So now you're even able, so I'm going to use that to just generate quickly some accounts. So I'm gonna, just going to type some stuff there. We're almost ready. So we'll type some stuff, drawing stuff. And we're ready. So I've got here the first account. So I'm just going to copy the family seat here. So that's the first part, so now I'm going to copy it into my notepad so I don't forget those. So that's the first account, and now I'm going to need a second one. And now we have here the second one. I do not have to activate these accounts, they can still be used for signing. So now I've got two accounts here. Um, right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to import those two accounts into the XAM app. So the, the, this is at least what I want to do for now, so it's a little bit more... I don't know, easier to understand. So I'm just going to go to import an existing account. So I actually do not have to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. So we've got here the first account. So, um, right, so I've got here the first account. And I'm going to call it account one. And then I'm also going to define a second account, uh, add account. So that's it's you don't have to do that. Um, I just want to showcase it here. So I'm just going to. Um, okay, I'm going to copy that. That's the second account, and that's account two. So things are a little bit more clear. Okay, so now we've got two, these two, uh, I meant account two. Okay, now we've got two accounts here, and these two accounts shall sign or uh, shall be allowed to sign for my uh, for my for one for for one main account more or less. Okay, so I've got now two accounts here, account one and account two, and those accounts should be now allowed. So we've got here account one. I'm also gonna if we here account one and I'm also gonna like um quickly look up the address again. So just go there again. So RGG and R4F. So we've got here R RGG and we've got R4 R4F. So these are two the two accounts. And with the multi-sign feature, I uh I can define that those two accounts shall be allowed to sign for this account here. So when we will need those two accounts, and it can also define a quorum. So it can add up to eight accounts, and then also define how much weight their vote has. But we'll be looking into that later. So the first thing we have to configure here is we have to set up for that account up there a so-called signers list. So now we need the signers list. That's the first thing we have to do. So we need to define that those two accounts shall be allowed to sign together transactions for that one here. And we can do that the easiest with the xam.community tool. So you go to the website and click on signers list set. Uh, when we're here, we can then add signers. And uh, we're also going to add a quorum. We want we need a quorum of two. And now we're going to copy and paste those two addresses. So we're going to go to the xam app again, go to account one, go to show, and going to copy and paste the address here. That's the first one. And now we can, say, uh, now we can say how much weight the their signature has. For example, we can also make it like 50, for example. And then we're going to uh, add the second one. Uh, it doesn't have to be 100, it can also be like 2 or whatever, but it has to be an integer. Uh, now we're going to copy the second address, and this one also has a vote of 50. So we've got two accounts with the vote of 50, and we need, a, for example, agreement of at least 100. So meaning that both would have to sign. But for example, if you have like five different accounts, you could have like one account which has like uh, a weight of 40, and then uh, whatever, then the other four accounts having a weight of 10. So we've got like 80, so whatever. So it's completely up to you how you want to configure that. But basically, you can you can 
the final quorum which has to be met. So uh, as soon as enough people have signed it, the transaction goes through. So it's, this is just for safety reasons. And right, so as soon as we're done, so meaning that in my case, both my signers will have to sign. I could also set it up with one and one and one, two, obviously, okay? But it looks cool with 100. So I'm gonna define it here. So I'm gonna add the weight of 50, 50. And then as soon as we're done, we're gonna say send sign list to sum. So now I have to sign that. Now I'm going to use my main account. Uh, so it's a third account. I'm going to use now this account right there, the R dev account. I'm going to sign the transaction. So everything I'm showing you, I'm showing you on the live net. So I'm going to scan that now. So I'm going to scan it from a phone. So, dup. and nope. So I'm going to sign it from a phone. So I've got also the example on a phone. And the transaction is almost signed, and also the minimum balance will be increased by five. But this is this is just a small side fact here. So we can also look it up on XOP scan. So we're done. Now we can also look into XOP scan here. We can see that this account here, the XOP, so on this account here, that um, this account is ready, and the sign list was set. Now my so if that's the initial balance, and my minimum reserve has been incre has increased to 25 because I now declared a a signers list, so maybe we can also see it here. Um, no, I don't think so. Settings, ah, yeah, in the settings, yeah. If you go to settings, you can see uh, the signers list. So the threshold is 100, and if you here are my two signers, which are allowed to sign it here. Now we're gonna go to the next part. Uh, for the next part, we're gonna use a tool. So Wits of Wind also created a great tool for a demo doing that, so it can be like integrated in future versions of the XAM map or any app basically you could also develop a tool for this multi-signing function functionality. But for now, uh, he also has a demo, so it will also like it will also paste the link to his video because it also explained perfectly. So I'm kind of doing redundant work here. Um, but basically, uh, you go to his website and go to releases and download the latest version. When you download it, you get the zip file and uh, and obviously extract the files and then o open it, okay? So I'm just going to quickly... Um, right, so as soon as you have it here, you can just go to... Um, uh, so when you have it, you've got the disk here, and then you just click on the index.html. When it's open, the website is going to be looking like... Well, I just had it before. Well, I have to open it again then. Um, right, so I'm just gonna look it up quickly. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just gonna open it then the normal way. And now we've got, so I'm gonna copy it here now. So now we've got this multi-signing tool. And so now we're on the site here, so we're going to compose a transaction. First, we do have to select if we want to do it in a live net or a test net. We're going to do it in a live net. So we click here. Then we can enter the account. So it's connecting right now. Then we're going to enter the account address of the main account. So meaning that one here. So I'm going to be, so and both of these accounts have a, voting, uh, a weight of 50. Weight. 50 and weight 50 and the threshold is as I mentioned before 100. So meaning that when both sign the transaction will go, go through and this one has a signers list object and in the signers list are those two entered okay. So this signers object belongs to that account. Right so let's continue then. Um, I'm gonna now copy and copy the address of my XOP dev account here and go to the multi multisign feature and paste it there and go to next. So in my case, I, I did not disable the master key uh, because I I will be removing all the multi-sign users again later. So I don't. So the thing here is, so right now, uh, th this account is allowed to sign himself, but also uh, like w with a majority here. So meaning that those two are unimportant, I could just remove them again here, okay? But the thing here is uh, that usually if you want to share custody with multiple people, for example, with people, then you're going to disable the master key. So this account can be like uh, used by this account itself. So because this account also has a family seed, which you have. And right, so I, I could be like just removing everybody again. So meaning that if it's actually like going to be complete, uh, uh, completely based on voting rights, then obviously we, I would have to de deactivate the master key, but I'm not going to do that. Because it will be, like I said, removing the signers after. So I'm going to go click on ignore and continue. Now we've got two signers here. So there are the two signers, 
And now we will have to, we can prepare the transaction, so we can, can enter in the memo our own text. So we can see here, it's a payment from where it's going to be sent. The sequence is fine here. We're going to enter the the uh, recipient. In this case, this is the address of Wheat to Wind, but I'm going to replace it with the, a burn address. So we're going to burn some XRP. So now we can live see how we're going to burn XRP. So now it's horrible, but don't worry, I'm going to only burn one drop. So, um, right, so I'm going to just get a special address, I'm going to get account 1 here. So that this address is account 1. So for everybody who doesn't know that, it's, it's, um, it's basically a black hole account, nobody has access to that account. So you can see it here, that this is account 1. Um, I also before sent some XRP there, so uh, er, er, all the XMP which are being sent here uh, are gone, so nobody has access to it anymore. So with the explanation to that, quickly showing you also the XOPL site. So you can see here it's a special address, an address that is the XRP ledger's base of data encoding of the value 1. In the ledger, Ripple state entries use this address as a placeholder for issue of a trust and balance, and this is a black hole, meaning that nobody can access them, okay? Right, so let's continue. So now we've set up our uh, recipient, so where it's going to be sent to. We now which we know we know which account is going to be used, and now we can also define some memo data. So we we don't have to use it all, but we can also call it just a simple a a multi sign test attempt. So now we're done here. Now we're going to render the transaction. So this is the transaction now. Uh, uh, displayed as hex hexadecimal values. And uh, now this transaction has to be signed. So this entire thing here, this is a JSON object uh, uh, being, trans as a being transformed into um, a hexadecimal string. And now we're going to continue. Now we have to sign the transaction. So we're going to go to a trans enter the transaction here. And now this uh, this transaction has to be signed. So we're going to first sign it with the R4F. So I should go offline, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to I'm going to be like um, I'm going to like um, fake it. So I'm going to click on offline here, and now I'm going to enter the family C. So um, by the time you see this, these family C's won't work anymore. So don't try. <laughs> So I'm going to enter the family C here. I think this is the I hope this is the correct one. I'm not sure anymore. Damn it. Let's hope that I guess. Oh no, that was the incorrect one. My bad. So it's that one here then. So I have to do it again. Sign again. It's that one then here. Yes. Oh, isn't it? Okay, I'm not quite sure again. Oh no. So I please this to hex below to personal combine and submit the signatures. Right. So we've got here the first one. Okay, no, this is fine, I guess. And now I have to try that again here. So I hope I signed it correctly though. Well, I have to look look it up quickly, so I'm gonna go back to the Nox player, and now let's see again which one of those add import an existing account. I'm just gonna import the family seed again. So I can quickly see. Okay, no, I can't see which account it is. All right, okay, so I looked it up. I think I should be f good here now. Um, so I signed the first one now. Um, right, the, oh, I'm gonna try it again one last time. All right, okay, now I'm, I'm back again. So we, we will be using now the first one again. So I, let's start with account one. So one last time, I uh, check, look it up again. The RGG, that is account one. So we now have that one here. Now I have to fake it again that I'm offline. So I'm gonna go to application and fake that I'm offline here. And now I'm gonna paste for account one the secret key. So now I signed the first transaction. Now I have to copy that and store it quickly because that's the first transaction I'm gonna store it now. So now we're gonna do the same thing uh, with the second user. So we're gonna choose the second one and we're gonna again fake that we're offline with the application offline and I'm gonna then enter our secret key. So that is the secret key of account two and I'm gonna sign that one as well and copy it. So now I've got both transactions and now we can store both of them, I uh, stored them in my notepad on the left side here on my other screen. And now we're gonna go to combine and then submit. So now I have to enter uh, here the sign transactions. So I'm adding here the first one, add. So that one is already done. And I'm gonna also add the second one. So we have to go to the, oh, my bad. 
And now we have to go to the second user. So uh, right, and I've also to click on that one. So now I've got both the users with a Chrome of 50. They met the criteria, so now we can submit it. And we're gonna submit the multi-signed transaction. And now let's look it up in the Explorer. So it's not there yet because right now it's being sent and processed. We can also look that up while it's being processed by the LiveNet. So I think we were too slow though. So maybe you will see it, but probably not. So maybe I yeah, were too slow, I think. Nope, that one already has gone through. So let's look it up then. Let's go back to BitHomb and we can see here there what happened here. So one entire drop and a fee of 102 drops, so it was a multi -send test attempt, and where it now zero, one drop was being sent to address one here. And that's basically now it was a transaction which was, which was being multi signed by multiple users. So, right, so that's how it basically works. So, now what I'm going to do, since you now know my secrets, which I don't, uh, which I'm not fond of really, I'm going to now like get rid of the connections here. So we can, we're going to do that together. I'm just going to click on delete, uh, delete signers list from account. Yes, now I have to confirm that again, because otherwise one of you could use uh, the signers list and sign transactions and also well uh, access the, the few funds I have on this test account. So I'm going to sign that again. And now I'm on the safe side again. And right, I'm done. So now I can look it up again also. So we're gonna also look into the onto the on this thing here. So on the XP scan, we can go to settings and see that nobody else nobody else is allowed here to sign. The reserve was being lowered from 25 to 20 again because the object is now missing. And you can also see here set signals list that it's now gone. All right, so now the connectors are gone. I'm also going to get rid of the accounts because I don't need them anymore. I will be creating new. Uh, so th these accounts weren't even activated. I was just using them for signing. So that's okay. So you can s create accounts and use them for signing, but don't even have to activate them. All right, so I do hope you liked this video. I hope it was uh, explained clearly and that you got the gist of the entire thing. And also, these tools will be so will some take some time until. Maybe some app will offer multi-signing soon, it would be a cool feature, or maybe somebody else, or maybe I will also maybe develop some kind of app which basically has all this functionality built in and it works. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.